Thank you, Capri. <laughs> oh, and do you want me to open it now? Um, you definitely can. Yeah, should I? All right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Will we'll you do this? Because camera. it's like already blurry because I touched it. <laughs> <laughs> that's me with cameras. Just, just me. Doing you put it on manual focus. Sorry. Oh, that's what I do too. Yep. You didn't have to give us goodies. Aw. Well, we figure since the next thing on the list is to kind of try some stuff, let's try some stuff. Awesome. Like, let's just try some stuff. So oh, and your, your, your brand of pellets. Yes, too. our brand of pellets. It's just nice. like a little sample size. That's cool. And then we have our freeze dried in there, so you can just give it a try. This um, is what you just mix with water. Yes. yes. Okay. And I have them sending you one of every season, so you can just try cool. it and see what she's most receptive to. And awesome. Um, yep, and there's birdie bread in there, there's... which is great for diet conversion. So if we have today used birdie bread she's before. like, hard no on pellets, <laughs> you can make birdie bread, mm. and usually it's a good way. Do you incorporate this good into it? Way to do it, yeah. Wow. So you don't need to incorporate the pellets into this because this is already made with the base of our pellets. They're oh. just powdered down. So, so it gets you used to no the flavor. Idea. Nice. It's hidden in there. Yes, and then you can tie in anything to Birdie Bread. So you could add something you know she already likes, like mm -hmm. her old food ground up so that she recognizes the flavor. You could add crushed nuts if you know that's the only huh. way to get her in. You could add fresh food. Like you can hide awesome. anything in Birdie Bread. Honestly, if as long as it takes the form of bread, I think they'll eat it. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. No problem. Like other goodies in yeah, here. There's chopsticks in here. Because okay. we're going to try target training. We figured we would try oh, tonight. Oh, cool. And, uh, as soon yeah. as you said the word untrainable, I was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you can try your best. I don't know how far we're going to get with her, but we'll see. Get, they get like a little notebook for note taking and stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's but, um, such a great idea. Obviously, you guys have the video for that. And so. a clicker, nice. Clicker. It's funny, we clicker train our snakes, a yep. couple of them. Yeah. We have a snake that has no eyes. And he started, he was given to us because he was rescued from a breeder because he had no eyes, he was discounted. But the person um, who bought him couldn't get him to eat, which is pretty common with snakes with no eyes. So they asked if we could take him in, and we did. And we're like, yeah, we, we can accept a, a challenge. Yeah. We got him eating, because uh, we have a lot of tricks up our sleeve, but we got him eating too well. He started thinking every time somebody was going into his enclosure, there was food. Anytime so. he felt movement, basically. Oh, so anytime yeah. you cleaned or anything. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, change water. Just, yeah, want to hold him. You would just, you just like mouth launch open. out and just oh, mouth open. <laughs> Whatever yeah. hit his mouth he grab onto. <laughs> so we started, yeah, right? <laughs> So first things first, we start with a treat test so we can see what Cheyenne is receptive to and what we can use for our target training session. Uh, we have a general idea from what they've been able to use in the past, but we always like to redo a treat test just to kind of see where a bird's at. Like humans, their taste buds can kind of change and so do their favorite treats. So especially if you're doing diet conversion, those treats will really fluctuate then. So making sure you do a treat test. Now we show how to do this in our family friendly parrot formula video number one, because it's one of our, your foundation foundational things that you should know. You should know what your bird likes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, however many treats you try to uh, test out on them. You want to have a general idea of which treats to use in which order because it might really come to your benefit. If a bird is reluctant to do something, you're going to have to use a higher value treat. Whereas if a bird enjoys doing something, like maybe it's the wave or some easy tricks, or it's just a person that it really likes, you may just use a lower value treat to maintain some of those behaviors. So a treat test is definitely necessary. No matter where on the spectrum of training you're currently at. We're going to start okay, Cheyenne nice. on yeah. this side and we have all of our treat options here. What what all did we end up putting? So we did walnuts, pecans, pumpkin seeds, almonds, and then the Harrison power treats. Okay, perfect. I think we'll put her right in the middle. Ready? <laughs> She's like, what's Go, happening? go. Get your treat. <laughs> My I'll, treat is Emily. I'll go to the other side. <laughs> Although I think she's probably just going to, come here. Okay, I'll start her and then she'll go away from me. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe. I'm going to stand on the side, yeah. <laughs> yeah she's like going okay. to roll over. Ready? You want to come try these things? She just wants to get to Emily. I'm so hungry. <laughs> just walked right over. <laughs> oh, she <laughs> So, I mean, I think that even if we hand her these, she's probably just going to drop them at this point just because the discomfort of the environment is yeah. too high and you yeah. are comforting. And so that's all she wants Makes um, sense. over food. It's just not reinforcing enough. <clears throat> No, she's like, no, you're just handing me things yeah, I don't want. Now, it's a, now I get to play. Yeah. 
Okay, we, we discovered something. Jamie has been just handing her bits of from each pile, and she's dropping everything except for Harrison's power treats and... No, that was a walnut. That was I, think, a walnut. I think I might have just tricked her, though, because the last one was the Harrison's. I thought she'd get excited enough to just trust me and take the next thing. What if I put one of each, like, in my hands? We could try that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that'll work. That's the pecan. Okay. Yeah. And now it's just food. Yeah. Now, she's like, now she's like, I like fine. this game. I'm yeah, this is a good game. All these treats. Oh. She's, no, she's just going to eat yeah. everything. <laughs> From They're nothing. all tasty. They're all tasty. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one? Uh, that was the almond. Okay. The only one so, she hasn't eaten is like the pumpkin seed, which I mean, who I likes bet she will now. <laughs> yep, she, there we go. <sighs> She either doesn't want any of it, or she wants all of it. <laughs> okay, so treat test tomorrow in between classes, and then right now just focus on getting a response with I think so, training. yeah. Okay. You understand target training, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I might do it differently, though, so if you want okay. to show me. Yeah, let's grab some. Yeah, maybe, maybe show, like, just exactly well, how I you would do it. Go. Yeah, because we've been doing target training with an alligator, which is probably the yeah. yeah. same concept, but a little different than... Different application? Bird. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, let's do that. Cool. So the important thing with parrots is that you use the very tip of the target. So we're going to use the very, very tip of the stick. Okay. And the reason why is if they can reach the entire thing, they're more likely to grab it aggressively and break it, mm. grab it and snatch it from you. Um, or if you're trying to get her to a particular spot, but she can grab anywhere on here, she most likely will beat you to it yeah. and just kind of outsmart you versus mm. you really controlling exactly where you want her. Or okay. you unintentionally put aggression on cue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, okay. so they keep in mind birds pair the emotional state involved with the time of learning the trick with the trick. So mm -hmm. you can get pissed off on cue if they're biting anywhere on the stick, but if you put it in just the right spot where she just barely can reach it, you're putting calm on cue. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so for example, for this, the having her on the back of the chair is going to work perfectly because you guys can start from further away and slowly go in to where you guys are meeting. Um, what we don't want is where you go in too far, recognize it, and then pull back because it's kind of taunting. It would be like, here, touch this. Okay. You know, it's oh, just so going to be sideways. So you're kind of like going in and meeting her. Okay. So that it's just a very gentle touch. Okay. Normally when presented with this, birds will be naturally curious and they're just going to reach out and touch it because they're just going to be like, what is yeah. that? And birds yeah. investigate with their beaks. Yeah. So it should work in your favor. Um, if she's not naturally curious about it, we might use a little bit of luring where we place the treat close to the mm. end yep. and she just accidentally bumps it while trying to get to the yep. treat. Okay. Yep. Let's... So, yeah. Why don't you do a quick sample to show and then... Alright, let's see what happens. Alright, girly. Oh, oh, she dropped it. <laughs> we let her sit for like <laughs> five, seven hours too. Yeah. So, five, seven hours. <laughs> five, seven hours. It's like seven 35 hours. days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Did I think she, she yeah, she ate it and she bit, so she oh, understands no. <laughs> what's going on now. <laughs> She's like, all right, okay, kind of happened. So the big thing is notice how far, Jamie, do it like exaggerated slow motion coming in. Okay. And notice the key to this is that if she's reaching with her upper mandible and tongue, it's impossible to bite it. Mm, See that? Point, yep. If you go too close, she can bite it because her lower mandible is then part mm -hmm. of the equation. Yeah. But the goal is to, in the beginning, keep the lower mandible out of it so that you aren't accidentally pairing aggression with target. You're only getting calm because it's impossible to be pissed off and be like, eh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> target, right? right? So yeah. uh, that's that's what we go for. So that's really the reaching I was talking about earlier. If you go in way too close and you have to pull back, it's very taunting and teasing to an animal. Uh, so you can imagine like for a predatory animal, yeah. you definitely don't want to do that. But for a prey species, it's kind of the same thing. We just don't want to taunt or tease. All right, let her take over. Okay. You're good, huh? Awesome. Let's give it a shot. And this is essentially just teaching her how to learn, right? Yes. Teaching her to associate the clicker with being a good thing. Yep. So then she'll start attaching clicker to, oh, I did something right. Mm -hmm. and so we can use that to form other behaviors. Yes. Is that kind of what we're... Okay. Exactly. So okay. she learns that she can learn and hopefully she'll be trying to earn clicks going forward. Okay. Other behaviors. Awesome. Well, she's still eating that one. Yeah, she's savoring. She's <laughs> like, this is not a whole lot of food, but I'm going to savor it. <laughs> Usually she inhales food, so this, yeah. is, this is weird for her. Okay. Ready? Done? Yeah. Yeah, she was already anticipating that. Mmm. <laughs>
Well, I think we're going to practice this a little bit more and come back in a little while. Yeah, way too much stuff going on. So what I love to do in that is like flash the treat to remind her what she's ah, working for. Actually, I need bigger pieces anyway. So if you get like at this point, we're not we're not 20 repetitions in where she's probably bored and tired of it yeah. or full. Um, we're at a point where she's like, we know that she's likely to still want to eat, but mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. You can just quickly remind her, and then uh, that'll usually draw them back in. Yeah, so a little, a little. Yeah. Okay. So it's not quite luring, but it's just like, hey, remember this? And then you get them re-engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then Sam's here. You're fine. It's just right. Sam. You know oh, Sam. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Is that good? So this time to clean up the next repetition, rather than having to hold it so long, mm -hmm. let's say you were holding it for 10 seconds before you had her attention, wait 10 seconds longer before you present the stick. So we're going more at her natural pacing versus oh. us like, come on, okay. touch it, touch it, when okay. she's not quite ready. Yeah. Yeah. So like from here, you're probably naturally getting ready to hold the stick. So let's count to like 10, 15 bit. seconds. Okay. Get her like re, uh, re-interested and like, oh, what did I do to earn that? And... And I would probably hold it a little further away than you have been. Okay. Just to see if she's willing to like turn that. and reach. There you go, right there. Yeah, because she has the idea, hopefully now. Mm -hmm. Give her a little reminder. Look at this. Oh, she pinned. <laughs> And Just she, give me it. No. And go ahead and take it away. Okay. Okay, so failure is one of the most important things that most people don't implement into training. And so, especially with parrots, well, look at it this way. If you show up at every soccer game and you get a participation trophy, mm -hmm. how hard are you going to try to get first yeah, place? Yeah. We don't want to do that with our birds, so we make sure that we intentionally allow one or two reps of failure for every success. Okay. Up, up to one or two. Not mm -hmm. like you don't want to have more yeah. failure than success, but mm -hmm. um, so then go ahead and try again. Okay. That's an okay distance? Yeah. Okay. And now let me flash it, good. And she's thinking about it, hang in there. Yeah, nice okay. job. Good girl. So I would normally probably end the session yeah. right about there. That's uh, end on a good note, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that first. We're, start, we're starting to lose her a little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that looks good. Cool. You're trainable. Trainable. <laughs> <laughs> or luck. We'll find out tomorrow. I don't know. I have my doubts still. I don't think she's that bright yet. <laughs> So yesterday we left off with Cheyenne where we sent them home with some of our pellets, some of our seasonal feeding system, the freeze dried version and told them to just feed her the seasonal feeding for dinner. I know that Emily said she's a foodie, but normally when birds are on a really heavy diet as far as being full of fillers, excess fats and sugars and things like that, they appear like foodies, but they're really not. Um, they're really just excited about all that excess fat and sugar in the diet. They may not be foodies for real nutritious foods like veggies or even healthy grains. So we'll kind of wait and see. I didn't get any messages from Emily last night. We had told her if she was nervous about anything and if Cheyenne wasn't eating or they had any concerns to message us and we didn't get any messages. I'm hoping that means everything went smoothly, but I guess we will see how motivated she is. It was kind of funny because yesterday, Emily invited us into Snake Discovery Zoo to see their alligator eat some shrimp. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! You're so good. Good. What? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my! There you go. What? Oh, oh, that's Rex. That's Rex. And I was like, you know, <laughs> I would love to see that kind of food motivation from Cheyenne. <laughs> that alligator was stoked <laughs> about that shrimp. So um, we'll see what we're kind of dealing with tonight or today, I should say. We have some master classes today, two classes, and I know Emily's going to be around for it. And in between, we're going to try to work with Cheyenne and see what she's willing to do. Um, so hopefully we get some more progress today mostly to convince Emily that Cheyenne is capable and as capable as the other birds that Emily's had in the past. Uh, lots of movement. Good. If we can get like one step from her where she'll actually take a step to touch the target, yeah, so like this way. that will tell me that she is a little bit more this. all in. I think about it. Not quite worth it. Yeah. Okay, so we might need to do a few more easy reps and then yeah. try again. But once we get them moving to touch the target, we know mm -hmm. we're 
good. And you can even see if she'll like really stretch yeah. to hopefully work into a. That doesn't induce a stretch. Um, there you go. Step. So you can works. try it from in line with the purge, but like right here. Ah, okay. And then think of it as like, will you do it here? Flash a treat if she's not. Still won't meet her a little bit closer. Like really try Push to work to get her to, mm -hmm. to make that stretch. Makes sense. Oh, <laughs> just like, like no, don't don't be making me work here now. <laughs> you see it? So you still yes. put it where she didn't have to move, and we're just not going to. So why don't you step. take it? Take a step back, yeah, right there. Okay. Now don't move your feet. So. <laughs> Come here. That's a good distance, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. You just needed like encouragement. Yay! Good girl. Remember this? Okay. <laughs> 